Hey guys, what well, expert here bringing you guys our awesome video on the latest on Tropical Storm Erica, where it's going, how it's going to impact the U.S., and if it's going to impact the U.S., and how strong it might get. This is my own opinion, guys. Do not start hyping about this. Um, do not start, like, you know, directing this to the National Hurricane Center, as they are the head of um, the federal agency of this, so they know more than I'm talking about. So don't take this seriously. We'll take this, um, as you know, as a grain of salt because there's a thing that can change. As look at Erica on the NOAA satellite, you can see it's very sloppy. You can tell that there's some shear. You can see, you can you can even see at the western northwestern quadrant of the storm that there's a little bit of spin. That's where the low level center is. Now it's nighttime over um, by the Lesser Antilles, so you can't see the sun out. But um, you can see that it's very disorganized. Um, there's convection containing the fire, which is what you want to see. But the low level center, but we are seeing some spin in the clouds over the top of the convection, which might be pointing to a new relocation. Of the center. If that were to happen, we could see some more. Um, if it was in the convection, we could see a strengthening system. But right now, the low level center is way off here. It's being sheared. I do not have a shear map today, but I do have some models on the show. And as we um, as we go to the first one, um, as soon as it loads, um, I got weather by models, which is pretty cool. Um, I might go slower just because of the um, you know, the recording and stuff. But uh, yeah. Let's see, um, so here's the GFS, I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to the West Atlantic, and let's go to, um, I can pick whatever I want. Now let's just do, um, we got to do the, pre we got to do the, uh, service res. Now see, I'm zooming on the Western Atlantic because I'm kind of concerned what's going to happen. Now right now, over the next two or three days, I do not expect a lot from America, I expect to continue to get sheared, really not make an impact on the, um, a lot, maybe Puerto Rico, give them some rain, which is really good. But as we go up, uh, let's go to our 114, let's say, and we got a we got a 996 uh, millibar storm according to the GFS full res. Now this will be a Category One strong tropical storm, Category One hurricane, just off the Florida coast, and this gets kind of scary. When we get to seven, we have a big problem. Now do not hype anything about this. This is my own. Um, you know, these are models. The with a storm like this, not very organized. A little, there's so many. Uh, uh, low levels, there's so many centers, this thing can get tricky, and do not take these seriously at all. This is just the first model run that's showing this. It's kind of agreeing with the ECMWF, but the ECMWF does not have a landfall in the U.S. at all. It kind of curves it out to sea, maybe, but people along the uh, Florida, Georgia, um, you know, the North... Uh, North Carolina, South Carolina should be watching the storm very closely and see because when you get into these water temperatures over here, they are around 30 degrees Celsius. They're one of the warmest. Um, they're the warmest in the planet. I mean, they're like 30, 31 degrees sometimes, and these things can bomb out in here. Now let's go to the other model. Let's go to um, the ECMWF. Now this one's a little bit different. But uh, it gives you the general idea of what GF is saying. Now, I'm not saying this is like a, uh, not saying that this is a really consolidated forecast at all. I mean, I this thing could form into nothing if it just does not survive this year. It's got three to four more days this year. At that, but after that, it's really just game. It can go. I don't want the Caribbean. That's pretty stupid. I want the Western Atlantic. All right, let's kind of act. We're not acting my favorite day. But of course, I can't show some maps on YouTube, so I can always pick specific ones. Let's use the UV850. I cannot. Uh, put anything else, but you can see it's kind of an open wave that uh, European has. Now let's zoom out to give you the legend. Now the European really doesn't do a lot with this system for the next three to five days. I mean, if you go to 36 hours, I mean it's kind of struggling. It still has an open wave, and then by uh, around 72 hours, we start getting, um, you know, it's still open wave. But then when we start getting 96 hours, it starts to truly. You can see some red in there. Um, it just parallels the coast. It really just parallels the coast, and then we have it parallels the coast. It starts strengthening it into a potential, a potential threat to the U.S. Now, potential because this model run is not actually, um, it's not really showing a lot. Uh, not we, of course, it's off the South Carolina coast, but really it does not make landfall. Curves it back out to sea, which um, normally doesn't happen. It just bombs the crap out of it. I mean, a Category Three, Four hurricane. Just like the GFS, but GFS makes it a little further west. But do not take these models seriously. We need to see some consistently see, and we will not uh, solve. This will not be a solid forecast until it makes through the shear zone, and then we'll start talking on what could happen. It could be a weak system, go south. Most models don't do that. Models now are trending a little stronger in the system, but it could. And as we hit a 9.5 days, it takes out to sea, but it, it's off the um, it's off the coast. And this, I mean, if we go to MSLB, normalized um, anomaly. I mean, look at this, 943, and then we go over to 10 days, and then we get over, we go over there, 
and we have a huge problem for anyone for the fishes. <laughs> but let's go with one last thing. Um, the intensity models. Now this is a pretty big part of um, forecasting. You need to know the um, see what kind of intensity everyone just cares about track and intensity, but they don't know what can really impact the intensity. I mean. They've been just a lot of miles on the show us today. Now, the one towards the bottom, I think I agree with more. But the, these pink ones, can up, I think that Category 1 or Category 2 is is about a 50-50 chance, likely. We'll get Category 1, it's about a 60-70% chance. I think we'll get a 70% chance of getting Category 1. Ooh, there's no some Twitter notification. Category 3, Category 4, I start, you know, doubting it, kind of. Because it would really need to strengthen it, but with a water temperature like these, I am placing my odds around 30% of a Category 3 or Category 4, but not outlined. But I just need to see more mo major models, and I need to see the storm survive before I can get pinpoint details. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter, I am at, um, at Expert Weather, Expert, and then underscore, and then WX, that's my track. And here are the latest tracks. Now, from the previous run, it had a Florida landfall. Now mo more models are just paralleling it and showing more of an Irene path. Now, hopefully this does not, hopefully this does verify, but, but the floor could really need some rain. So if we get some hour bands in there, it doesn't make a hurricane, that would be kind of fine. Oop, whoops. But, um, yeah, so you can see the GFDL and stuff are taking it, like, out to sea. But the other models are kind of taking it more of an Irene Arthur path with up the uh, our banks. But do not take this seriously at all. Models can change. It could be an out to sea path. It could be a landfall. It could be a weak tropical storm. It could be a strong tropical storm. can be a major hurricane. Really dialing a major hurricane, but it's possible. Just saying. Just saying it's possible. I just think it's a 30% chance. But yeah, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this um, first update on uh, Erica. I really just changed my YouTube name just because I don't really like Hurricane Central anymore. But yeah, see you guys in the next video. Peace out, y'all. <laughs> what?